AHSM, we're here. It's April the 22nd, Wednesday. It's hump day. I know that doesn't make as much of a difference now because it seems like all the days run together and everything. Um, but uh, we're joined by Kaylin. Kaylin is a junior in Liberty Public Schools. And so she's going to kind of walk with us through um, this devotion. So kind of before we get started, um, how's your world? It's doing good. We're all getting through it. Awesome. What yep. are you doing? For, what are you doing for fun? You know, knowing that you can't like go out and see your friends and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What are you doing for fun? Yeah, well, luckily I have three brothers, so they keep me entertained. Definitely. So there's never a boring moment. You know, we go outside, go for walks, baking, you know, just keeping ourselves busy. Yeah. Have you thought about being a YouTube influencer and just putting all their antics on YouTube and Honestly. you know, creating this account? <laughs> Honestly, you might start a vlog channel here soon. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, if you have not uh, been following us with our devos, we're using Paul David Tripp's um, book, New Morning Mercy. So um, feel free to jump in and uh, uh, grab that book. You can get it on Kindle. You can order it by Amazon, or you can just kind of follow along with where we are today. So I'm going to have Kaylin start and read First Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you blessed you are blessed because the spirit of glory in God rests on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For, in, for it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who the gospel of God? And if the righteous are scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Mm. Yeah, so um, we know that, um, well, for some of us, this is a little bit more difficult than others, right? You know? Um, we may be just fine. Everything's fine at home. Our family hasn't gotten onto our nerves too much yet. Others, it's, it's more difficult at home. And, um, I don't think it's, it goes to the point of being persecuted or anything, but, but this is just kind of, um, a little bit of suffering and maybe inconvenience, but what is maybe the theme of our, of our devotion today as you kind of pull that out? Yeah, um, in the devotional at the beginning, it says, if God intended for all the days of your life to be easy, they would they would be. But in grace, he intends for your days to be his tools of refinement. So it's kind of talking about suffering as a Christian and what it looked like and how it's different from what people perceive. Because whenever people think that, um, you know, if you're a Christian, you're not going to suffer, but it's actually quite the opposite. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, I, I'm convinced that if I were to ask anybody, I, I think I would do this, but if I asked you, hey, what are you, the dreams of your life for the next 20 years? I mean, there'd be all kinds of things, you know, milestone type of things for someone your age you might be graduating from college, getting married, starting a family, starting through all those kind of things. It's all those things that bring um, a smile to our face. And yet when we think about where we grow the most, um, it's probably in the pain and the suffering that comes along the way, because none of us ever wish for any of that. But if we look back um, and we're really honest, we'd say like, hey, when it was really tough, that's probably when I grew the most. What would you say to that? Yeah, I say I agree to that because, you know, God promises suffering and whether that be a worldwide pandemic or a fight that you had with your brother, you know, even Jesus, the son of suffered on earth. Yeah. And if, if God, if Jesus didn't suffer, then, you know, he wouldn't make us go through suffering. But because Jesus suffered he allows us to suffer just because God was that ultimate sacrifice and he was the ultimate example. And, you know, he, God was and is and is to come. And so we can, you know, kind of be confident in, in our suffering and knowing that we're all going to grow through it and we're going to get through it because in the end, God is still God and he still is the, yeah, he still wins. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you this question. You can think about it and then I'm going to read, refer to some of these passages. But when you think about your friends, your Christian brothers and sisters that are in high school here and you think about, you know, what is rough and how this is just kind of uncomfortable and weird is a word I've been using a lot. Cause it's just weird. Um, what would you, what maybe, what would you have to say to them um, in light of this devotion? So let me read a couple of these passages. So um, God's agenda is that 
um, trials are going to come, but he wants us to learn from them. In James 1, he says, count it all joy, brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, because you know the testing of your faith will produce steadfastness, and then go ahead and let that steadfastness have its full effect, so that we might be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And then 1 Peter 1, verses 6 to 7, uh, it says, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been grieved by various trials. So there are things that are really going to grieve, grieve us, but those are going to refine us and make us more like Christ if we embrace them instead of shun them. Romans chapter 5 says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And then he goes on, says, knowing that we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And then in Philippians 3, he says, but whatever, Paul says, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And he goes on and you see this theme that the suffering and the pain and the things and the trials that he has to go through, um, his encouragement through God's word is to embrace those. So in light of that, what would you, what would you say to our, our high school friends, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, that type of thing? Um, the key kind of phrase that stuck out to me was rejoice in suffering. And you hear a lot of people say, well, why should we rejoice if there's pain going on in the world? And that's not saying... Mm -hmm. Like, yay, I'm suffering, good, like, good for me, but it's rather saying, I know God is with me during the fire and that he's holding his arms out to me so I can trust that. And, you know, whenever you go through trials, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. he was literally in the fire with them. And yeah. so we can be confident knowing that while we're going through these weird times or, um, you know, uncertain times, um, that he's going to be with us and then it's all going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, that that's so good because it is – it's easy to get kind of wrapped up in this moment right now, right? Like this is all it's going to be and you're wondering when it's going to be over and all those kind of things. But the reality is, it's like, we don't know that. And we can ask why God all we want, but he doesn't have to answer that question. And so we're left here. Like, what are you going to do at this time? So um, thanks for joining us and uh, yeah. hope you guys are, are doing well and um, look for this uh, coming. Well, make sure that you find yourself, Hopefully you can find yourself on Instagram on HSM and we'll tag you and uh, you can feel free to share it with your friends, but thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you guys.